Thank you, Lord, how you've blessed us in so many ways. And Lord, we thank you for the wonderful time we're going to have today as we lift up our voices and we give you praise. We open up our hearts and our minds to hear your word, Lord. Let us just be filled with your spirit. Let all that you are be all that we are this morning. Lord, we thank you this morning amen. and everything we do in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. amen. Here we go.
Starting to get our winter visitors all back. Welcome, you guys. You knew that you just got back. And good to see you. Happy to see you. We had a great feast, um, and we're we're getting looking forward to a great winter time. We've got some things coming up in January, but the holidays are coming upon us, and just a lot of things going on. So uh, we're just glad to see everybody. We hope everybody's having a great time and a, and a, and a great year. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little later, but but uh, just welcome everybody. We're glad to have everybody with us this morning. We come together just to worship and to give the Lord glory and give His praise. I don't really think we have any announcements. Oh, I do have an announcement. No home group this Thursday night. Gary Slacken. <laughs> <laughs> it's real bad when it comes back down the hill, ain't it, Gary? <laughs> this morning he looked at the, at the bulletin and he seen there's only two scriptures on the morning service and, and none for the evening. And they, so he told Doreen to tell me that I was slacking. So opportunity came right back around when he told me no home group on Thursday night. And I well, that's a good way to take advantage of things, isn't it? But anyway, so no home group Thursday night. As far as that, uh, any other announcements? I don't think we have any. Uh, just to be reminded of that. New order remind you of the women's Bible study at Jackie's house at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. Women's Bible study here at the church on Monday evenings at 4.30. Also prayer with the pastor on Thursdays at 10 o'clock. That will be this week's schedule. So look forward to seeing you at those and then next Sunday also. Okay. If you, if you haven't read your bulletin, we're having a Christmas card craft class at Irene's. So if you want to do that, do it with Irene. Okay, Chris, Chris, that's a hard, that's yeah. a hard thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas craft class. Craft. Christmas craft Christmas class. Card craft Christmas card class. Oh, well, they don't make it harder. <laughs> mine, mine, mine. All right, here we go. Hello.
see if anything else. Nope, I guess we're good. Okay, here we go. Lord, we thank you again for today. We thank you as we've come to this place and how you've blessed our lives in so many ways, Lord. And as we want to give back to you a portion of what you've already blessed us with, Lord, we, we praise you this way and we give you glory in this, in this manner. So, Lord, we ask that you would bless the gift and bless the giver. Bless the offering for your purpose and your purpose alone, that this little congregation would, would speak to the, the people around and the, the community where we live, that what, what a great God we serve. So, Lord, we thank you again for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. God is good. All the time. No matter who you are. All the time. No matter where you live. No matter what you're doing. All the time. All the time. Everywhere. All the time, God is good, right? Yes. We believe that? Yes, we do. Did I hear you say it? Yes, we do. All right. Well, we're gonna, somebody going to tell us about how good God is this morning. She asked me if she could share testimony, and I told her I would let her. So, back if you're on stage, girl. All right. All right. There's, no, there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing more witnessing. There's nothing more exciting for me to hear somebody be so joyful about what God has done in their life, where they just can't help but share it. Amen. And she came in this morning. She said, "Pastor, you just got to let me share my testimony someday." Like, well, if the Lord sent you here and told you to ask, then, then I guess today must be the day. So, <clears throat> electronic devices are failing us today terribly. Okay, and there you are. Thank you. Good morning, guys. My name is Rebecca. Rebecca. And this is Levi. Is this on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I just wanted to share a little bit about my journey and about my... my um, my gift every day that I've been receiving for just the last two months, and God is so good. Um, I've not been a really um, active member in church until very recently. Um, I've also haven't been as sober as I've been <laughs> until very recently. I've um, struggled with uh, addiction, and um, I didn't think I was going to survive it. And um, 
It is so, it is so amazing to be here today and to be with my son. Um, I got to go to an event last night, and it's a big deal for me because I've not been somebody that could walk into a building and be comfortable with myself. I have been, um, <coughs> my life, I, I live in fear, and God has taken that from me. Yes. And, um, you know, yes. forgive me, this is the first time I've actually talked in front of somebody for a while, so <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but um, I came here, and I came here with um, pain and hurt on my soul. And this church welcomed me with open arms Amen. and gave me a place to uh, feel safe and feel comfortable. And I, um, as I go on this journey every day, I, I see some of you guys out, outside of this church. And it, it is wonderful because we all, we all look at each other and we, we just know, you know. And um, I'm grateful to be here and I'm grateful to be a part of this. And I'm, grateful to, um, I'm grateful to have my son. And I'm grateful that I get to have him every Sunday in this building. And so I get to the day where I get to have him back. And, um, you know, my brother, my brother died seven years ago. And he died um, as a result of a, a drug deal. And he's not defined by that. But he um, was very important to me. You know, I grew up feeling very alone. I um, miss him terribly every day. And for a long time there, I used that as a crutch. I used that as a reason to... Um, not get to where I could be in life because I was afraid that, you know, loss is so prevalent, you know. But, you know, he was called home to God. And as much as I don't, you know, I can't come to terms with that, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling at peace with it today. Amen. It is so beautiful. I feel him present. I feel, um, mm. I've never felt this way in my entire life. It is, it is so strange. It is so wonderful. It's so beautiful. And um, I have to say it. I'm, I'm just humbled. It, this is God. God is good, and he loves me. I, I used to pray, you know, if, if he loved me so much, why, why was I in the position that I was in? And um, it, I thought, you know, where is God when I need him? But he's there when he needs me. That's the most. I didn't know he needs me every day. Every day. And uh, he needs you too. Yeah. You gonna say something? <laughs> um, I'm a little nervous and so sorry. I, I ha this was going better in my head, you know. Um, but the last two months have been just a blessing. I have been staying with um, uh, Tony and Laura. I don't. You guys, you guys might know them. Um, they are such wonderful people. I approached them um, two months ago and I asked them, and it's so humbling because I, this is God's work right now. Right. Is I approached them and I said, you know what? I can't do this on my own. I, um, I feel like I don't have anybody else. And they're not, they're not my family, but they're the family that God gave me. And in that moment, I, I asked him, can I please live in your house? And can I please do the things? And as an addict, you, you, you go through this world sometimes with people judging you for it. But they don't know what you go through when you, when you quit, when you put it down. When you live a day without having to feel like you have to use to, uh, to, to satiate your own self-worthlessness. <coughs> Because it's not self-worthlessness, it's self-worth now, you know. And these people, God bless them so much, allowed me into their home knowing my past, knowing that I might not have been trusted at one point in time. And they are the beginning of just this wonderful journey because I thought that I wasn't deserving of that. <coughs> thought that I didn't deserve the love and the trust and the people that I have now in my life. And... Um, you know, it's only the beginning. I'm only this has only been two months that I'm doing I'm doing this, but it's brand new. It's like I've been literally reborn. You know? And uh, this is a, <laughs> I feel like I'm overflowing and I can't stop telling my story to everybody and, and, and telling how God is good because today he is, yesterday he is, and tomorrow he will be. My my tomorrow may not be promised, but it's gonna be promised if I do have a tomorrow, he's gonna be there for me. And it's always been hard to relinquish control to somebody else, but I am powerless in my addiction. And I, 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 I give my will and my, my life to God. Amen. And, um, you know, I just love every one of you guys. You guys have been a part of my journey. This is the, the most insecure I've ever felt in my entire <laughs> life, but the most secure with love. Love was not something that I was given at a young age. It was why I questioned my, my Lord and my Savior. I questioned him because at a time when I was a child, I couldn't understand why God would not allow me to have a mother who loved me. 
But then I realized as I grew older and I, as I'm coming to be sober and learning everything, my mom didn't have the ability to seek help like I do. She doesn't have, she has the chance to meet God, but that's going to be on her terms, you know, when she's ready for it. And um, she's got stage four cancer right now, and it's actually one of the hardest things in the world for me. Because I, every day, I know that could be her last, and God will take her home. But he has given me the opportunity to clear my, to clear my heart of pain, and to accept her, and to tell her I love her, and that no matter what, everything's going to be okay. Amen. You know? And um, I am just blessed with that because I, I, I couldn't see past my anger and my hurt. But there's so much more in this world to, and then the holding on to resentments. And that is something that I'm a big fan of resentments, you know. <laughs> but um, not anymore. I don't resent anything. I'm, I'm grateful that God gave me the mother that I have. And uh, it's been a journey, but if, if something were to happen to her tomorrow, I know that in my heart that I have always tried to facilitate a relationship with her, whether she has wanted it or not. And family is so huge to me because my family didn't come from my blood. My family came from this church and from God's church and from people like you and people like the NAA and, 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 and programs that are offered. And, and, and I just, a God of our understanding is, is something that they use because not everybody is as, be as believing in my faith as I am, you know. And um, I'm just grateful to discover everything I've been discovering in the last 60 days here at, at, this, at this building. Because what is it? Our church is not this building. Our church is where we congregate to celebrate God mm -hmm. and is everywhere that we get together and gather to celebrate and give thanks. And boy, have I been wanting to give thanks for so long. <laughs> and I'm grateful to have been able to share a little bit of my story. You know, um, I've had a, I've had a up and down life, but I'm breaking a cycle. Amen. And, um, you know, when I was pregnant with Levi, I spent the most beautiful nine months of my entire life um, in terror and in fear of something that I did not understand. I thought that what had happened to me was genetic and that um, my discovering of God is only recently, you know. It is, it is a very new thing. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced, but it is new, you know. And um, when he was born, I, uh, I felt something. I felt love. I, um, I felt so grateful to have been given a chance in this gift I hold in my hands. And um, <laughs> I never thought I was capable of that. To grow up thinking that I didn't deserve love or I was never gonna receive it and then to be able to give it tenfold to someone else, it's no longer about me, it's about him and what I could, what I could do better in my life to show him a better path. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. Um, it's this, this, every day is not easy, but I take it one day at a time. And I, um, in the middle of my event last night, I, I celebrated um, Halloween at the uh, Narcotics Anonymous in Phoenix, and it was, um, it was beautiful. I was, I have never felt so accepted and so loved, and I had never done anything like that sober. Uh -huh. And um, <laughs> that was, I had to, in the middle of the, in the middle of the dance and everything, I'm just so full of joy. I had to stop, and I walked out of the building, <coughs> and I got in the car, and I sat down, and I just thanked God for the blessings that I have received, for the ability to know that everything that I had just experienced and that I was going through in that moment was because of him, you know, because of uh, the love and the fellowship of this church and, and his church and what he has offered me. I've, I've, I've been growing and building, and um, I'm just grateful to be this child. I'm grateful to know everybody here, and, um, you know, thank you for accepting me for who I am. You know, Dennis, I appreciate you letting me tell my a little bit of my story, and um, I'm a little nervous, so <laughs> thank you. Hi. The reality of who God is when He when it becomes real to our spirit and real to our to us to a point that we put that above everything else when we realize the reality and how real it is is, is when we really begin to experience all God can do in our lives. Um, there's <clears throat> as we 
as we learn, as we grow, we, we learn of God, but to, to, to know God personally really opens our eyes from the darkness to the light in the way the Bible explains it. <clears throat> it's always amazing to me how God works through things and, and puts us in places and times and, and brings messages to us in a way that we, that we receive and then he always adds a little icing to the cake and um, for Rebecca to come this morning I want to share her, her testimony it just leads us right into where the sermon starts out and that's what that's what that's what we're talking about we're in a, we're in a time of the year with the, that we call harvest time it's it's a season of the year that that things are ripe it's a season of the year that that the growing the growing season the growing time is completed and the things that are that are there are, are finished and ready to be harvested and ready to be received you know and the farmers in the area uh, have been for a while have been very busy they're actually in the time of of harvesting and planting it's the time to harvest the cotton and the summer crops and the time to prepare to plant the winter crops for the next harvest season and so it, it's a very busy time of the year and and, the, and they're out there and, and this is not just happening in, in Pinal County this happens all over the world this is we're in the time of the year that the thing this is the, it's the, the the equinox it's time when the seasons begin to change and and a lot of things are going on and and, and the, what, what, what we're doing and, and, and how we're doing it is because of past year's experience. We learn from the things that we do so that we know how to prepare to, to receive the harvest that we have and to prepare for the next season. And this isn't just in the farming community. This, this, this philosophy, this, this planning, this, this collecting and planning is going on worldwide in, in every industry, in every corporate office, and everything that's going on out there. The, the, the end of the year has, is coming. They're preparing for closing out the end of the year. And they're looking at the results of the things we did last year. Do we want to continue to do the things we've been doing? Do we want to initiate new things? Do we want to... We, we've got to make the, our preparations for the coming year. Because it's coming. It's really going to be here in January and in February. We're excited about a new year. And in the middle of the summer, we're excited about how the year is going. But this time of the year is a time of, of concentration, a time of thinking, a time of planning, and a time of planting throughout the entire world. And there's industries that, are, that, re, that, re, that revolve around this time of the year. Indigo Ag is a company that develops technology for seed for farmers. They, they, they. Uh, if you can, you can drive down Arizona Street off of Jimmy Kerr into like the back of Walmart, and there's two cotton fields on each side of the, there's cotton field on either side of the road, and this cotton field has a lot of cotton, and the cotton balls are are about that big. And this side of the field, the cotton's a little taller, and it has a lot of cotton balls, but they're probably three times the size of the cotton balls on this cotton. That's seed technology. Um, Indigo Ag estimates their sales for 2019 to be ten billion dollars just in the technology that goes into developing these seeds to be more productive to have more production of there's there's a there's a vast amount of people that work every day throughout the throughout the world to be more productive to, to have things next year be a little better than they were last year and as we, progress, as we progress and as we go forward and as they plan, they plan based on what they, what they have learned from the year before and what we can do in the coming year for the, for the production that we hope to, to, to receive. Now, in order to be diligent about anything, we have to refresh. We have to come at this time of the year. You have corporate, uh, corporate meetings and they come together and say, okay, this is what has happened. They get big graphs and they spend hours and they spend days and they spend months preparing to show the people that work for the, for the industry, this is what has happened and this is where we're going. But we, we need that refresher. We need to look back at things and say, okay, this is what has transpired. In order for us to be the most productive that we can, we need to go this way. And we've come to the, this time of the year being that way because we've proved, history has proven that it works. History has proven. We just had our, our final board meeting for the church this last week with the with the with the with the, the all the directors, all the people on this on this on the board. We all met and we we 
we looked at last year and we looked at the last five years and we looked at the things that have happened and we looked at where we are and we looked at the things that are coming our way and we looked at how are we going to be prepared for the things that are coming our way. And some things we, we can really easily plan for. Some things are pretty, pretty normal. And some things aren't. Some things, sometimes things happen that, that we don't understand. Or we may understand why they're doing it, but it doesn't really fit into our plan. Nobody checked with us about doing this, but yet we're going to have to deal with it. And we, we, like I said, we've come to this and we do it this way because we know that it works. But, but we need, at this, at this philosophy of, of, of going back and refreshing ourselves of what has happened and looking forward to prepare for what's going to happen, if that works, and we know that works so well, we need to apply it to our spiritual life also. The same philosophy works in our spiritual life also about looking back at what has transpired and knowing that this has happened and this was the result of that. So what is what is our what is our plan for the future? Let's go to the book of First John. First John, we're going to go through the entire chapter this morning, but I want to read verses one through three. Now John writes, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and we bear witness, and we show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. That is exactly what Rebecca told us about. The revelation of this is real. This is a witness. This happened. John says, we're writing this to you. We're telling you this. We want you to understand that this has really happened. We've watched it happen. We've seen it happen. We heard it. We touched it. We did all those things. It's real. Eternal life was honestly, truly manifested before us so that we could have it. We saw it. We witnessed it. We walked with Him. We talked with Him. We ate with Him. We did all of those things with Him. And we're telling you about it so that you can have fellowship with us. So that you can experience as much as we did. Because they understood that they had already experienced that Christ had come and left. And they still experienced His peace. And they still experienced His presence. And they still experienced Him in 100%. And so they're trying to... He's, John saying, this is old, this is old school stuff. We're telling you about it because it really, really, really happened. And we want you to know it so that you can understand that you can have it too. It wasn't just for us that were there with Him. It was for everybody. Jesus died for everybody and you guys can experience that and you can rejoice in it. Now let's read on. John 1, 4 through 7. And John writes, And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and him and in him is no darkness at all. Remember the word all? All is all that means all. All is all, is all that all means. And all is all that all will ever mean. All. All is all. This is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all all if we say then we have fellowship with him and walk in walk in darkness we lie and we don't tell the truth but if we walk in the light as he is the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin all sin there's that word again all oh all. All. he takes it away it doesn't exist it's gone we don't have to deal with it. This is real. John is he's going back. He's giving us a refresher course. Okay, this is this is what we're this is where we have come from. This is what has happened. And this is what is available. This is where we are today. This is where we came from. Now this is where we are today. It's available to all to walk in the light, as he is the light. You know, all, oftentimes our progress as we learn something and we begin to use it, we begin to experience it, our progress tends to cloud our vision. Our progress tends to take us our focus off of what we had planned. 
We, we receive the Lord. We receive God Almighty. We, we, we begin to experience His peace. We begin to experience Him. And everything is great and everything is wonderful as Rebecca talked about. And then things begin to happen and we get busy and things start happening. And we forget that there was more. I got here and this is great. Oh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the time I've spent with the Lord. Life is great. Life is good. Life is grand. And all of a sudden something happens like, well, what did I lose? What, what happened? Why, why, why? It was so exciting for a while and, and now it's not so exciting anymore. I was so excited. I was so filled with the Spirit. And I was so glad that God was in my life and, and now I, I don't know why I don't have that same feeling anymore. Or it's not as strong as it used to be. And I don't understand why this is. Why this is. I don't understand why what changed. But see, our focus, we forget we had a focus. We, we, we experience God. We get excited. And we, have, we, we know there's more. If God is so much, I want to have this all the time. But as life happens and as things go on, we forget where we started. That's why we need the refresher course. We need to be reminded all the time of who God is and what He's done for us. You know, I'm sure that somewhere in a lab there's a guy at, at Indigo Ag Company that has been a, that has worked in the lab and he's been working on a specific project, maybe cotton seed, and he wants to make cotton seed just produce so much more and he knows you just right at the brink of it and he gets so involved in what he's doing that he forgets we're just farmers. It's just that simple. It's just that plain. I'm just making cotton seed that we can grow cotton and we'll have enough to make some clothes. And I didn't know this until some years back I read this and I was pretty amazed that the paper that they use to print money is made out of cotton. So hey, for the cotton farmer. <laughs> Keep it up, boys. <laughs> but, but see, we can get so wrapped up in what's going on that we need that refresher course. We need to go back and just, just really read the meat of the gospel and be reminded that there is power in the blood. We need to be reminded of the basics. We're just cotton, we're just farmers. We're we're just raising cotton. That's all we're doing. We're not we're not we're not trying to get a plant that reaches to the moon. Maybe we are, but but we're just still at the basic part of it. We're just going to take this seed. We're going to plant it in the ground, and we're going to harvest what it receives, what it what it produces. We're just farmers. And see, sometimes in our life, our life gets so complicated that we forget that we're just followers of Christ. And that's what Paul is, 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 is Paul John is alluding to in this in this first chapter. He's saying this is the basic principle. This is the simplicity of it. We bear witness of it. We saw it. We touched it. We walked with him. We ate with him. We visited with him. We were friends with him. And he was crucified and he ascended. And, and that's the reality of it. That it's available. Because of what we've witnessed and what he's done, it's all available to you. And it's available to anybody that will believe in it. So we just we just want everybody to have a part of it. We want everybody to experience all that God can do in your life. As Rebecca talked about. I didn't know that I could be loved like that. We would aspire to think that if, if my family doesn't love me, strangers aren't going to love me. Yes. Yes. We don't realize that God can put people in our life that care about us more than, than anything else because they have the love of the Lord in their themselves. And if you begin to experience that, I mean, wow, I, I, I didn't know it could do that. If, 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 if Des's dad was here today and he saw that cotton field, he would say, I didn't know cotton, one plant, could make so much cotton. I didn't know that could happen. Because when he grew cotton, you just bought cotton seed from the cotton gin and whatever it produced and what it's produced depends on you can try to do the best you can with the water that you had and hope the weather was good and that was about all you could do about it. But now they have technology to, to, to increase the production and nowadays we have more knowledge. Nowadays we have more testimonies. Nowadays we have more people willing to say God is great. All the time. All, all the, the time. time. Even on the cloudy rainy days. More so. More so. <laughs> more so. That's the, that's the beauty of what, what John is writing to us in the book of John. That it's okay. It, it, it's good. It's always good. Because it produces eternal life. 
Because it produces eternal life. That's the end result. That's the goal. That's the focus. That's what we're looking at is what I'm doing and, and who, I am, who I'm learning of. For this produces eternal life for me. If I just bear witness as John is saying, this is who he is. This is what he's done in my life. And this is why I get so overfilled that I can't help but share. Because he's doing so much. And he doesn't stop. He doesn't take a break. He doesn't just, just, doesn't just come into your life and get you all excited and then dump you off on the side of the road and say, okay, you're good. I'm going on to the next one. As he said, wherever I am, he's going to be with me. He's the same yesterday, today, and he'll be the same tomorrow. It doesn't change. The only thing that changes is me. I need this refresher course. I need to be reminded of all that he did. I need to be reminded of who he is. I need, I need to stop at the end of the year and go, wow, God was so good to me this year. I've had such a harvest this year. I've experienced so many things this year that I didn't know could happen. Because God is so good. We have to remember we're followers of Christ. That's all we are. We're not, in, we're not any more than that. We don't aspire to be any more than that. We have to focus just to be that. A follower of Christ. That requires all of our all of our focus and all of our time is just to remember who I am and what I'm doing. You know, when I worked at the ranch, Roger would come out and he would say, I don't know how you can spend 14 hours on that tractor and go back home for six hours and go get back on the tractor. I'm a farmer. That's what I do. It's not hard for me. Because it's what I it's who I am. And when you're a follower of Christ, when you truly love the Lord, it's not difficult. I just have to train myself to do it. I just have to realize that that's where my joy comes from. What did he tell us in verse 3? Or verse, verse 4. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. That's the purpose. That's what we're doing. That's what he's telling us. If you'll remember these things, just remember these basic points, your joy will be full. That's the, whole, that's the whole idea. You don't have to concentrate on that. Just remember it. The Lord. The Lord is on my side. The Lord is the one that has provided all that's around me. The Lord is the one that is, has put me in this place that I can experience Him in the way that I do. It's because of Him. Not because of me. It's because He loves me. Not because I loved Him. Because He loved me first. Because he's God. Let's go on John. First John chapter 1, 8 through 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. See, recognizing who we are recognizing the life that we've lived and what I deserve for the life that I've lived and to realize that because of what he did I do my refresher course because of what he did he paid the price for all that I've done he's already taken care of that he's already removed that from my life he took it out it doesn't exist it's gone yes, yes, yes. it's not there as if it never happened the song says as if it never happened, he is there. You know, if you walk into, into a, go down to Eloy here to one of these truck stops, and you walk in one of there in the morning, see who's eating breakfast, and there's a guy in a pair of bib overalls and a dirty pair of boots. Almost bet you he's a farmer. But that doesn't mean he doesn't have the knowledge of all the seed technology that he needs. That doesn't mean that he's lacking anything. That just means by outward appearance, I can see that he's a farmer. I don't know how much he knows, and I don't know how good he is at it, but I can see that he's a farmer. And that's the way it should be in our Christian life. I don't know how much you know about the Lord, and I don't know how much time you spend with Him, I don't know how much you pray, but I can see that you're a Christian because you testify of that. Because you wear the love of God on your, on your heart. And in your words, and in your speaking, and in your actions, you demonstrate who He is in your life and how important it is in your life that you let somebody know 
You know, Dessa was telling me yesterday that um, uh, somebody that she, I can't remember somebody that she, she knew or had known one time, that contacted her and told her that, that her mother has cancer. And asked Dessa, would you guys be praying for my mother? She's going through stage four cancer. And just as Rebecca talked about her mom. And Dessa said, it reminds me of how important it is that I share the gospel of Jesus Christ in every opportunity that I get. Because there might be somebody that crosses your path. There might be somebody that God puts in your way that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. They don't know what it's like to experience His peace. They have no idea. And they're living in fear and in darkness. And you might be the one person that has an opportunity to say, you know, have you ever, have you ever prayed? Have you ever considered asking God to help you through this situation? Have you ever considered that part? Because a lot of times they're going to say, well, no, it never really worked that good for me. I've had people tell me that. I prayed and I prayed and it didn't really work that good for me. Well, did you stop? Yeah. Well, how can it work if you stop? How can it work if you stop? Well, I was going to go to California and I drove and drove and three hours later I wasn't there so I just gave up. I just quit driving. If you go to California, you got to drive till you get there. <clears throat> you can't stop and go, I guess it ain't there. They must have been lying to me. On the map it says it's there. My phone says it's there, but... Uh, I've been driving three hours and I ain't there. I can't be there. <laughs> if you're going to pray, you pray until God does something. You pray until you get there. You don't pray and say, well, I prayed about it. And that's all I can do. Well, if you quit, you didn't get there. <coughs> Keep praying. Because John tells us that it's true. John says if you do your refresher course and you read the Scripture and you read of all the testimony and you hear the testimonies of people of how real God is, He's really there and He really does all that He says He'll do. He really does heal people. Not just then, today. He didn't stop. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And forever. He didn't stop doing the things He's always done. But we stop. We're not diligent enough to push. You know, they, they've been doing seed technology for many, many years. They could have said, oh, we've got a pretty good cotton crop. We're good enough. Let's go on something else. <laughs> we did it. But see, they don't give up. They're like, no, if we can do this much, how much can we do? Hey, have you bought um, <clears throat> any fresh produce lately? <clears throat> have, you bought, have you bought radishes lately? They got radishes that big around. Yeah. yeah. You have to slice them to be able to eat them. They're like, where'd they come from? I had gardens. We've had gardens all my life. I, we never had radishes that big around. We had some carrots come in from the food bank. Maybe a year ago. Laid one in my hand, took a picture of it. The carrot is almost so big that you can't see my hand. So big around. I took them home and cut them up and baked them like potatoes. <laughs> Where'd that come from? They didn't grow that big when I was a kid. They've learned to, through technology to increase production. Because they didn't give up on the basic principle, they continued to improve on it. They continued to work in the basic principle. And that's what we're to do as Christians. The basic principle, John says, go tell somebody of what we have witnessed. We saw him, we walked with him, we touched him, we, we ate with him, we did all those things that was real. Go tell somebody how real Jesus is. Tell somebody how real Jesus is in your life. Real. He's real. <coughs> Matthew 5 and 16. Now, this scripture has been coming to me, I mean, almost... Almost every time I read and I study, I end up at one time or another reading this scripture, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men. He doesn't say let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. 
That's what Jesus said. Let your light so shine. Be a beacon. Be a witness. Live a life that says, I love the Lord. Live a life that says, somebody says, ask you any question, it reflects back to what the Scripture says. Daryl gave me this little deal last week right here. I'm going to put it in my Bible. I've got to get it out of there. Probably one of the biggest things, I, one of the things I hear about more than anything else. Anxiety. I don't know how many people have told me lately, oh, I get anxiety. Well, I don't even know what that is. I don't know what it means. But it says anxiety is a result of envisioning the future without God. That's anxiety. That makes you afraid. That puts you in a, in a very uncomfortable situation. See, I, I, I'm a little different. I don't believe that all those, emotion, those emotions that they talk about that cause you to do this or do that or bipolar or any of that, I don't believe any of that exists. I don't believe any of it's real. Because there's a little saying that says, no God, no peace. No God, no peace. That's what I believe. I believe you, you can live a life and let God be in control and let God give you the peace that you need or you can live a life and fall under all those other categories. Um, somebody, I've had a lot, I had a lot of people, but nobody says it to me anymore, but I have a lot of people told me, well, I'm bipolar. I had a guy in my office one day said, I'm bipolar. And I said, I'm bipolar too. I said, everybody's bipolar. He said, what do you mean? I said, let me get up. I said, you get up and slap me in the face and see how much my attitude will change. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bipolar. Uh, I'll change in a heartbeat. <laughs> We're all bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> Those are just things that the world tells us to, to keep us where we are. To where we don't reach out to Jesus. To where we don't realize there's only two powers. The Bible tells us there's only two powers working in this world. And you're going to live under one or the other. Under the freedom and the joy and the peace that you get through Jesus Christ. Or without it. That's the choice. And anxiety and bipolar and depression and all those go over here with the world. And if you want to know what the, what the, what the what's on the other side, it's in Galatians 5. Peace and comfort and joy and meekness and temperance and all those things, that's on this side. Hallelujah. You get to pick. It's completely up to you. Nobody makes you. Nobody pushes you. Well, I'm not going to say nobody because the Holy Spirit will lean on you pretty hard. Because yeah, Jesus loves you. That's why He pushes you. That's why He puts you in church. That's why when, when somebody speaks a word sometimes or sings a song, you feel that spirit on you. It's like, oh, man. What am I going to do? I can't stand up. They'll think I'm crazy. Well, I said last week, we're all just crazy Jewish cowboys, so come on. <laughs> just come on. Allow the God of peace to begin to work in your life. It's by you inviting Him in. He comes in. He promises if you'll ask and you'll believe and do in your, in your heart and confess with your mouth, I'll move on the inside and you won't even believe what can happen. You won't believe there can be that much cotton on one plant. You won't believe the things He can do in your life. You just have to choose. Mary, would you play a song for me, please? You just have to choose. How do I want to spend the rest of my days? See, we have no guarantee of how many days we get. We just know that our days come to an end sooner or later. We know that sooner or later the days will, will run out. And where am I going to be at that time? What side of, am I going to be on when that day gets here? Am I going to be on the bipolar and the anxiety and the depression side over there just so grounded in all the things that the enemy puts on me that I can't see my Lord and Savior? Or am I going to be over here waiting for His return? Anxiously looking forward to the day that I go meet Him. Which side am I going to be on? Which side? Which side? Well, this morning we're going to give you an opportunity as we do at the close of every service 
If, if, if you've never prayed a prayer, you've never asked Jesus to come and live on the inside of you, you've never given Jesus a chance in your life. Right now, you can do that. You can stand up and walk up here. I'll pray with you right here. As many as want to come, come. We have plenty of people. Daryl's here. Gary's here. There's plenty of people here to pray with you. Come and we'll pray with you right here. And you can just ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin. Ask Jesus to move in on the inside. Ask Jesus to guide you and to, and to, to lead you into a place of excitement and peace and joy that, that, you, that your joy might be full is the way John put it. So if you're here this morning and, and you want to do that or you feel the Spirit giving you a little nudge, follow that nudge and come on up here. Just stand up and walk up here. I'll pray with you right here. And you can ask Jesus, come into my life, Lord. Forgive me my sins. Cast them as far away as the east is from the west is what he promises. Never as if they never, never, never <coughs> happened. Today, that day starts anew. When all you have to do is ask Jesus, come into my life. All you have to do is ask. He's waiting for you to trust Him and to believe in Him. That's all it takes. Believing that everything that I told you this morning is true. He came that your joy might be full because He loved you. So anyone this morning, anyone at all, just step out and walk up here. Come on up here. Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, come and live on the inside of me. Lord, Lord come and live on the inside of me. I believe every word I heard this morning. I believe every word I heard this morning. How you love me? How you love me? And you came that I would have my joy full. You came to have my joy full. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. Just as you gave your life for me. Just as you gave your life for me. And may be a living testimony. And a life for your glory. And a life for your glory. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I pray to you today. And I pray to you today. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Three more names in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Three more soldiers for Christ. Yes. Three more that God will use in a mighty, mighty way. And you can relax knowing that, 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 that the clinches of the world have been taken off. You belong to His. And nothing, regardless of what anybody ever tells you, nothing can take you out of His hand. And that's scriptural. Once you confess Jesus Christ, you are His. Keep your focus where it needs to be. Don't forget to go back once a year for a refresher course. Do the things that work. He loves you. He cares for you. He died for you. And He wants your life to be full of joy. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone at all? Well, let's close in the word of prayer. Lord, we, we, we praise you, Lord. We give you glory this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you how you, how you never stop working. We thank you how you let us be part of what you're doing. We thank you for the lives that you saved this morning. Three miracles right here. Move from death to life. Lord, we just give you glory this morning. We thank you for your presence here. We thank you for all that you do. We ask you to lead us and guide us in everything that, that you have for us this day. And for the life ahead, keep our focus where it needs to be. And remind us all the time of who you are. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all rise. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. May you go in peace and in comfort and in the full joy of the Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Gary, the guy... Um, We'll be at the door. He's got uh, devotional and the Bible for all three of you guys. Thank you for letting me share Thank my you. story.